Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and today we're going to talk about type on a path in Illustrator on the iPad. So when you want type to curve around the path like this, you'll use the type on a path feature. So I'm going to start just by deleting what I have here, and then I'll go over to some type that I have saved over here off to the side. So just a line of point type. And then next to that, I have a circle that I drew with the ellipse tool. And what I recommend doing is first select these two things together and then tap and drag on this little plus sign to make a copy. It's really helpful to save that original type and the path separately so that you can always go back to them again if you need them because sometimes things go awry with type on a path in Illustrator on the iPad. Let me undo that. Okay, so I've got my type and my path selected and now all I need to do is go over to the right hand menu, tap on the T and then tap on type on a path. All right, so let's move this into place. I'm using this little crosshair cursor over here and I've got my smart guides on so I can sort of center it up on the peach there. And of course you can turn on smart guides inside the precision menu. Now let's look at the two handles that we have here. So there's a handle right here. I call this the, the single handle cause you can see it only has one line. And then there's another handle here that I'm gonna drag around to the other side. And I call this the double handle just so we can tell the difference between them. And the first thing that you wanna do when you have this is you wanna make sure that you have the alignment of the type set to center. So let's go over to the properties panel here and down to paragraph. And we can see right here, currently the type is uh, left justified. We want it to be centered so that it actually goes between those two handles centered. Here is right justified. So let's choose center. Now I'll close the properties panel and zoom in a little bit here. And now from here, you may wanna do some adjusting. So you can go, always go down to the common actions bar and change the letter spacing like this or change the type size like that. And once you've got sort of things set the way you want them, you might wanna take the double handle here and just align it so that it is right close to that handle on the bounding box. And this way we know that that type is now centered at the top. But let me show you what this handle does. If I drag this um, and I change the distance between the two handles, if I go a little too far here, you'll see that handle turns red and it lets you know that you have overset text, that there's actually text there that's not showing because the distance between the two handles is close. All right, so let me go ahead and I'll just move this out so we can put it right back aligned to the handle on the bounding box for the circle. And now let's look at the handle on the left, the single bar handle. Now when I move this, I'm moving the position of the type on the circle. So that's handy to know. And if I drag this inside the circle, I'm changing the position of the type like that. All right, let's go ahead and drag it out and then I'm gonna just sort of align it to that bounding box there so we can see that. Now, I have these bounding box handles here that allow me to sort of do that centering, but if you're wanting to center to something else, you might wanna create a guide. To do this, go back to the precision menu and I've got rulers turned on. You can turn them off and on here, and then you can close this and you can drag out guides like this. And so wherever you place your guide, you can use that to align the type. All right. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the precision menu and just turn off the guide so we don't see them anymore and go back to the properties panel. All right. So we've got the first part of our type. And in order to do a top and a bottom like this, you need to create two separate circles with type on a path. So let's go ahead and do that by grabbing the type tool, tapping once on the artboard like this, and all of those previous type settings that I have are included in this type here. And I just need to double tap on it to select the type. And now I'm going to just type using my keyboard over here, my connected keyboard and, oh wait, I was gonna say, I love to vote, <laughs> but that's not what I'm saying. I voted today with an exclamation point. 
All right. Now I'm using a Logitech keys to go keyboard. If you can see that here and I've got it connected by Bluetooth. I love this keyboard. So I highly recommend that. All right. Now let's go ahead and make a copy of this circle up here. Let's get the selection tool again, tap and drag on that plus to get the copy. And then again, I'm going to copy this and move it over here just so I have that original in case anything goes wrong. I've heard that there's a little bit of a bug happening sometimes with type on a path. When you close your document and you open it up again, you'll see, you know, it's sort of reoriented on the path there. So it's nice to have a copy just in case. All right. So I'm going to grab both of these together go to the menu on the right hand side and tap on type on a path. And now remember I can use this first handle, the single handle to put the type inside of the path like that. Then I'm going to drag the double handle around so that it's kind of oriented opposite. And of course, remember we have the paragraph setting here. This type is centered and now I can just move it into place here. And what I'm noticing is it looks a little kind of tight there, too close to the, the peach. Let's see if I can align it exactly to that circle like that. All right, so this is where we can use the properties panel to change the settings here. So in the properties panel under this section here, type on a path, we can choose what we want aligned to that circle. So right here, currently we have the baseline, the bottom of all the characters aligned to the path and we can try center. So that drops it down a little bit. And I think that looks better, or we can even try a sender. So that's all of the parts of the characters that stick up above the X height. So that's like the capital I, the top of the exclamation point, that sort of thing. Um, let's see how that looks. Actually, I think that's too high. So let's go ahead and go back and change this to center. I like the way that works. And then you can work with your spacing, letter spacing, that sort of thing. But now I have a really nice type on a path. So my last tip here is for now, just to make sure that hopefully everything will stay this way when you close your document and open your document. I just want to go ahead and lock these. I'm going to tap on this lower circle, tap on the lock to lock them, and hopefully they will stay in place. So this is a bug that I've seen reported on Adobe Illustrator user voice, and I will place a link to that in the description here. So you can upvote that if you want to, if you've been having trouble with type on a path, it's June of 2022. And I know they're aware of the bug, so it should be fixed pretty soon. We hope. All right, so we've locked this to hopefully keep it from moving. Uh, but there's one last thing that I just want to show you really quickly. Let me go ahead and unlock this by selecting it and then tapping on the lock. And let's see, I've got this one path here. And if I zoom in, you can see on the common actions bar, a little pencil next to the path. And if I tap on that, I can get access to the anchor points in the curve handles. Um, and I will say that this is pretty limited in what you can do editing wise. And as you can see, my type was reoriented there. That formerly smooth point on the circle has now automatically changed into a corner point. So although you can edit a path with type on it, I recommend just creating a new path, getting that copy of the type that you already have and doing it that way. Uh, because editing the path itself is going to mess up the type and it's really not a regular circle with smooth points on it anymore. All right. So let me just tap undo and undo and undo and look, it's not going back to where I had it. I don't think any amount of undoing is going to help that. So hopefully this is something that we're going to see fixed in upcoming versions so that we can get back to, you know, not having our type reposition on the path. So definitely upvote that user voice link if you uh, want to look for it in the description for this video. All right. My name is Laura Coyle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe for more tutorials on Illustrator and Illustrator on the iPad and all things Adobe. And check out my website, lauracoilcreative.com, where I have more tips and also an email list where you can get even more tips from me 
every month on my newsletter, and then I also offer courses. So check all that out, and thank you so much for watching.